Hello, welcome back to another Sonic Lab. Today we're looking at the brand new circuit mono station from Novation, which is essentially a kind of evolution of the circuit principle. For those of you who perhaps don't remember what the circuit is, I've got one here. This is the circuit. This is like a little uh, two six voice uh, digital synthesizer with four sample drum tracks as well. It's like a, a kind of little powerhouse uh, sequencer idea sketch thing. And if we look at the difference, basically we've got the same 32 pad sequencer, but it's ever so slightly bigger because it's accommodating what effectively is an actual analog synth voice. So what they've done is they've taken the principles of the sequencer and they've added this analog synth voice, which is loosely based on the base station two, but it has some some differences. Ooh, you might think, a base station two in a uh, sequencer package from the circuit. Not quite like that. It's a sort of simplified base station two. Base station two obviously had two LFOs, two envelopes. This is much more simplified because it's only got a single LFO. But it is an actual analog voice. And the idea, I think, was to sort of give a partner uh, if you like, to the circuit, because they'll sync up together, you can have them side by side, and that would mean that you could kind of run like proper analog bass sounds alongside your, uh, your, your circuit. So what we have here is it works in very much the same way. Across the top, you've got different functions. So you can sequence oscillator one and oscillator two separately, which is kind of interesting. And that's because this is a paraphonic synth, which essentially means you can address each of the oscillators separately via note data, but they will share the same filter, the same VCA, the same envelope. So only if one, uh, the oscillator one is triggering will the second one sound. So starting with the construction, actually they, all of these knobs and faders are actually really pretty nicely solid. I mean faders, you get a bit of wobble in them anyway, but the knobs are all really kind of solidly uh, attached. It feels like a kind of fairly sturdy thing. And if we just flip it up here, you can see underneath you've got this sort of yellow uh, rubber pa rubberized padding, which is the same as you get on uh, some of the other Novation thing. Obviously the circuit you've got blue, yellow is the colour of the mono station, and uh, that matches some of the accessories that come with it. But if I hold this up here, and just get that into focus, you can see we've got a whole bunch of different connectors here. And the first thing, if I start here, uh, as well as a line out and an audio input, because we can process external audio, you've got these mini jack MIDI uh, connections, in, out, and through. And so just coming along here, we've also got clock in and out, again on mini jacks, so that will be external and internal clock, so you can run that from analog modular gear. Then we've got no out on CV and gate, and this follows oscillator one only. Uh, which is actually also tied to the pitch of the oscillator. So if you tune the oscillator, you can't have an interval between this and maybe some external gear. This goes out at uh, five volts per, uh, volt per octave Eurorack format. And we've also got this CV out, which as I said, that ties in with this modulation track, which allows you to run a separate CV uh, track to run external gear or map internally via the mod matrix, which is what you route here in this particular section. So AUX CV output, and then you would route the sequencer by pressing this multifunction button. Final connections, we've obviously got a USB, which is for MIDI only, so you can hook it up with the circuit components. I guess that will probably also be via web MIDI or standalone. And then finally, we've got an external power input. Remember, this doesn't run on batteries like the circuit. And again, it doesn't have its own internal speaker. And just coming back to the pads, these 32 RGB backlit pads are also velocity sensitive. Uh, you you can access oscillator one or oscillator two, or pressing them both together gives you the ability to play both oscillators. You know, as a sort of dual keyboard mode, if that's what you want as well. So let's take a listen to the basic building blocks and see what they sound like. Starting off, we've got a sine wave, plus or minus an octave on the course, plus or minus a semitone on the fine tune. Triangle wave, sawtooth wave, and pulse width. Now, as for PWM, I can play a note here, which is all fine. But I can also adjust the pulse width modulation. So if I play this pattern by pressing shift and turning the fine knob, which gives me the pulse width, which of course I could always automate that as well if I want. But, but more likely I'm going to use the modulation matrix and I'll probably use the LFO. So if I now play this pattern, actually before I do that I should notice that if you, when I'm pressing 
oscillator one, it goes purple, oscillator two goes green. So you know which one you're routing, which is actually a neat little feature. So now what I'm gonna do, go back to one, play my pattern. Full depth. You notice I'm not getting the full through zero pulse width, which is a bit of a shame. I always like to see that because it gives you some extra rhythmic possibilities. But while we're here, quick word about the LFO. Uh, that can be synced or it can be free running. In this mode, we've got free running. And it goes up pretty high into audio rates, which is pretty cool. But we can also sync it. And when you sync it, the interesting thing is, is it becomes... It re-triggers. So not only does it sync uh, to the internal clock, but it syncs to key trigger. So that sort of sync button is a dual function. Triangle, sawtooth, square wave, sample and hold are the waveforms. And as I say, in free running mode, it goes pretty high up into audio rates. And in sync mode, you sync it to the master tempo in various beat divisions. We've also got the possibility to sync the oscillators too. And that's accessed by the shift function, pressing shift and oscillator two. will now sync oscillator one and two. So now if we bring oscillator two up, and then switch to oscillator two and modulate the pitch. We get that classic tone. Uh, we can also obviously modulate this via the uh, mod matrix. So if we wanted to modulate the pitch via the envelope, we would just or via the LFO. We've got those possibilities, but it does sort of highlight the, uh, the problem of only having a single envelope. If there were two, uh, just via a little switch that would really help because then we could have those two separate modulations. So there's another little trick. You may have noticed there's a ring mod uh, fader here and that's because we can set the ring mod between oscillators one and two. I've got, if I go into shift note, I've got full range. I press them both and I've got the two keyboards. If I turn those down, just bring the ring mod up. We can get those kind of little tones just by tuning different intervals between the two oscillators. But here I can apply a glide to just oscillator one. So I'm going full glide, come back to note shift, shift note, sorry, and then I've got the full keyboard. And a bit of LFO. Get some fairly bonkers. mod tones with just a single source. Let's get onto the filter. Sawtooth into the filter, usual path. This is a state variable filter, which is similar to on Peak and the Base Station 2. Uh, state variable filters often have a variable move between uh, low pass and high pass, but this is a switchable mode. Taking the mixer level up a bit. That was below halfway. As well as getting louder, we do get a little bit more smudge. It's not all that pronounced, so bring a bit of resonance up. Halfway. Take the dropping the level back down. You do get that slight change of character in the resonance and then, and then full. does that sort of screaming, bubbling sort of stuff. Uh, check the uh, 12 dB. Like a two pole filter. Get those nice musical harmonics, which are just a little bit more subtle, I think, and very nice sound to that. If you want more drive, you can always add more drive into the filter with the overdrive. particularly with the 24 dB. Get that. That kind of classic bass station into a distortion pedal type vibe. But you can also add some extra distortion with this uh, button here, which is the distortion knob. So we take that up. 
we really start to get that sort of crazy over the top, three different types. A bit more subtle, number two. And number three, which is more like a kind of fuzz pedal. So you can really get that kind of mad over crazy business if you want. Okay, so let's see if the filter track, take the oscillators down, put it up to full resonance. Sounds like about six octaves, apart from the very high one. So it will track, uh, and also if we add a bit of that distortion, we can get a square wave as well. And just for the, in case you want to adjust the tracking, there is a shift key tracking mode. So from naught to 100% and those divisions in between. So if you want it to track the keyboard or not, you've got the choice. So let's just take a look at the envelopes, dialing in. Get some pretty, pretty sort of snappy zappy stuff, and obviously you can go into negative amounts for negative polarity uh, if that's what you want as well. Uh, I don't know if you can see here, but as I dial it positive or negatively, it gets brighter. To find the zero point, I don't know if you can make that out, but it goes blue. There we go. And that means that there's no modulation there at all. Uh, in fact, there is uh, another way of setting this up. If you press clear and turn it, it will also reset back to zero, which is a nice shortcut and saves fiddling about. So just a quick note on storage. There are 32 sessions which you can store within the circuit mono station. Uh, remember, oscillator one has 60, up to 16 patterns per session, oscillator two, eight, and also uh, the mod eight. You can also store up to 64 patches, uh, which are total recall of the full front panel. These are in two banks, and you just basically bank between them using the octave buttons. It's also possible to set the MIDI channels for oscillator one and oscillator two, and that's a shift power on function. You get to the basic settings. Once you've set the setting for oscillator one, oscillator two is the next one up, and it means you can play externally via a MIDI keyboard. Oh, whoa, where did that come from? Well, I've added some extra gear to try and demonstrate the sequencer because the sequencer is a big part of the circuit mono station. I should also point out that the actual original circuit, the interface design and the implementation of the sequencer and all of the other parameter things is actually a thing of genius. You know, the team behind it have done a great job and everybody sort of seems to find it very easy to use and it's very kind of hands-on. And we've got the same sort of thing going on on the circuit mono station. We've got three sequencers. We've got oscillator one, oscillator two, if we want to uh, run the different intervals or different notes. And then we've got a mod sequence. And the mod sequencer allows you just to hit these kind of each per step you've got, you can dial in the amount of modulation that you want in this, via each step. Fairly straightforward and then you route it via the, uh, the modulation matrix. So let's just play this quickly. So I've just got a straight, one bar, straight note, sustained square wave type of thing. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna dial in a bit of filter. Because what I've got is the LFO. On a triangle wave, on a, sorry, a sawtooth wave, synced to the clock of the sequence. So I've already got some movement going in there. That's great. But what if I want to add some more? So I'm now just going to add some automation. I press and hold record and I'm going to... So you see my automation is moving and I could make that for any of these parameters that is not a switch. So that's actually pretty cool. So now what if I wanted to have some pulse width modulation? So I'm gonna to go to my mod sequence, and as you can see, if I stop this, you can see I've essentially got a square wave that is just running, so on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. And I wanna route that into uh, the modulation somehow. So I'm going up to my mod matrix, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the selector along to the sequencer. I'm gonna select pulse width modulation, make sure I've got the right uh, oscillator selected. Uh, purple is oscillator one. And now I'm just going to dial in a certain amount of that. Mm -hmm. 
I take the filter out. Should be able to hear that more clearly. So if we go to our, you see we've just got the straight square wave with a little bit of variation in it. Now this is to do some interesting things because we've got other pattern settings so we can we can divide, multiply or divide the clocking of each pattern. So that's doubled up. So I'll go, let's go slow it down a bit. But what I can do is I can also now smooth that. So now we get this kind of slew on that mod matrix bus. So there we have that going on there. So now let's come back to our second sequencer where I'm going to basically turn up. I've got another line, so if I just turn these down, I've got this running on just a, a sine wave. And also it's bypassing the filter, as is the noise. What I've done is I've bypassed the filter for the noise and the oscillator, so now I've got this stuff going on. And what's actually cool about this, if I take this down a little bit, we've got some additional pattern settings. If I press shift and gate, I can add some portamento right up to way too much. And that can be per step, so you can get those kind of 303 slides if you want. So you can start to see the power of not only the automation that's going on, but that kind of paraphonic operation, and that's actually quite useful. The thing about this is, obviously, with all of these, even though we've only got a single envelope and a single LFO, the fact that we can modulate these kind of manually per step gives us a whole bunch more additional modulation possibilities. So this is how I've got the thing set up. I'm taking the CV and the gate out and coming into the CV and gate in of the Dreadbox Nix. We reviewed this elsewhere, check it out. It's, uh, it's also a nice synth. And then I've got the AUX CV output coming out and going into the filter modulation. So if I just press play, the CV has been driven from oscillator one part. And it's not just the notes, it's also the pitch, so if I change the pitch of oscillator one, it changes the pitch of the external CV, I'm guessing because they share the same voltage. So let's now get into a bit of uh, bussing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit the AUX CV button, which you can see here. Now I'm going to dial in a bit of LFO mod. So now, LFO is running into the NIX and modulating the filter. I can prove that by, by fiddling with the filter because we're only listening to the NIX at the moment. So now what I can do is I can start to build up, I can start to mix some of these CVs. So I'm going to start adding the sequence, which remember is our square wave part. Uh, let's slow the pattern down and start dialing some of that. So now I've got the LFO doing a sweep. Whoops. Doing a sweep. And then I've got the mod sequence modulating around that and that's being mixed together. And what's good about that is it means that we can actually blend together CV signals from uh, the envelope, the LFO, the sequence, and also velocity channels and mix them together out to this auxiliary port, which makes it actually quite powerful for controlling external equipment and creating these kind of mod buses. And also, uh, that means that it's all tempo synced to the master sequencer or whatever it is that you're using to run, because obviously this will sync to external clock or external MIDI, uh, however you want to run it. And just a word about that CV out, the AUX CV out is just a control voltage. It's not something that you can scale to be uh, as precise as a, a note control CV output as well. So one last thing, I'm just going to bring in a Volker because I'm sure you want to know whether these will sync together. And I'm just going to bring all of this stuff down and then maybe I can add it in. So what I've done is I've taken the clock output of the circuit mono station, gone into the Korg Volker input, and I haven't adjusted any settings. You can actually change the settings because you've got uh, 
two PPQN and it goes from one, I think, up to 16. So this is just default as it goes. So if I just press play. <laughs> Bring out the external audio. Add a bit of extra automation. So it's great to see two manufacturers playing together, no need for a software update, no need for attenuator cables or any other kind of weird stuff, it just works and that's actually really handy. So I think the mono station uh, definitely has a place. I mean, the basic synth engine does sound really good. The raw waves are chunky and kind of authoritative and give you that sort of uh, thing that suits bass lines effectively and particularly when you sort of maybe hooked it up with other gear it will hold its own. I suppose the thing that I would really like to have seen is some kind of effects unit even if it was just a delay the simple fact of adding that extra effects like so many mono synths do at the moment it would have really kind of added an extra dimension being able to tempo sync that and kind of create a little bit more than just the synth engine can supply. Uh, one other little thing that would, would be nice to see is if the audio in could be switched into pass-through mode rather than just going directly into the filter. That could have been handy, uh, but you know, it's a minor thing and not really a deal breaker. I think though my biggest problem is the fact, the price of it. it. At 479 quid, it's not perhaps your sort of first port of call. Remember you can buy a circuit for, I think it's uh, 279, and you can buy a base station 2, which is a more fully featured synth and has a keyboard for 359. So the two together would only be about 160 quid more. I mean, yes, it's more money, but you get more functionality in terms of instrumentation. I mean, obviously where the circuit mono station wins out is this tempo synced and parameter lock stuff, which is actually very powerful. So for me, it just feels a tad on the expensive side. I, I mean, I know that it's not just a simple matter of shoehorning them together. There's obviously a lot more analog circuitry in here. It's not not just the circuit sequence in there, there are CV voltages and we've obviously got to control this and there's the auxiliary CV as well. But it just feels on the face of it, you know, for a, maybe a first time buyer, it feels a little bit on the expensive side. However, if you've got a setup that you want to integrate this into and you want to control this external gear and have that kind of uh, powerful modulation, routing and also this parameter lock stuff, then it's well worth looking at to add some analog to maybe an existing system that you haven't already got. Anyway, that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. We've got our weekly Sonic Talk podcast. We've also got lots more features and reviews coming up over the summer. See you next time.